Hey everyone, it's Johnny here and welcome to this tutorial on how to factorize a monic quadratic trinomial expression. Now what does that phrase mean to begin with? Because that's a quite a tricky and complex phrase by the sounds of it. Very off-putting if I was learning this for the first time. A monic quadratic trinomial. Well, let's first of all start off by looking at this example and defining what a quadratic is. So if you're not familiar with the term quadratic, a quadratic is simply an algebraic expression that has an x squared term in it and it is also where the 2 here, the squared, is the largest power that attaches to any x term in the expression. So what I mean by that is we have two terms that have an x, we have the x squared and the 7x, we have the x squared, so at the moment we think it's a quadratic, this x has an invisible 1 above it, so it's x to the power of 1, and because that 1 is not 3 or 4, it's still a quadratic. It's not greater than 2. If this was x squared plus 7x cubed, if it was a 3 there, this would no longer be a quadratic because the 2 would no longer be the greatest power attached to one of the x terms. So that's why it's a quadratic. What about a monic quadratic? Well, monic simply means that the number in front of the x squared term is 1. Now, you're probably thinking, but there is no number before the x squared term. Well, in maths, when there is a 1 before a term at the start, it is invisible. Okay, so really there is a 1. There is a 1 here before the x squared term. We just don't have to write it. If it was negative 1, you could even write negative x squared without putting negative 1. Now, a monic quadratic is a quadratic that has a 1 before the x squared term. It's not about any other term, it's the term that has x squared, and you should always put the x squared term at the front, followed by the x term, followed by the constant, which is just the number without an x. Now, that's what a monic is. It would be called a non-monic quadratic if there was a number other than 1, which you would have to show, such as 2 or 3. So if it was 2x squared, this would be a non-monic quadratic. If it was a negative 1, so or just negative x squared, what you would do is you would factorize the negative out so that all that you had left in the brackets was x squared again. So the negative would be factorized out to leave you with a monic quadratic trinomial within the brackets. I'll do an example of that in another video. And then what is a trinomial? Well, think about the word triangle. Tri means three sides. It means three. So tri or a trio, if you've ever been part of a trio, that's three. So the trinomial simply means three terms. So x squared, 7x, 12. So you will typically with a trinomial have, well, you'll always have an x squared term, a an x term that has a number before it. Remember, if it just said x, it would mean 1x. And a constant, a number at the end that doesn't have an x or an x squared. Okay, and you always order them in that way. If a question ever gives you a trinomial in a different order, put it into this order. Okay, so that's what a monic quadratic trinomial is. Uh, let's now get into actually how to solve it. It's very simple. You just follow the method called PSF. So with this example, PSF, what we're going to do, this means product sum factor. Okay, so the product, and bear with me as I explain this, what you're going to do here is the product of the two terms that we want to put into brackets and we can kind of set it up down here actually. We can set it up down here. We know that this expression is going to be put into brackets because that's what factorizing is. Uh, we're going to be using factors, okay, and they're going to go here. Now, we're trying to figure out what two terms go here. And I know that the first term in each bracket is going to be x and x. And that, that's what you already know for sure because it's a monic quadratic. Because it's a monic quadratic, think about it like this. If we were undoing the factorization, if we were expanding, which is the opposite, we would be multiplying the x by this x. We would be multiplying x times x. Now, what's x times x? x squared. It gets you back to the original. That's the point. Factorizing doesn't actually change the value of what you have. It's just another way of expressing it. Okay, so you would factorize this into these brackets, and if you would undo it, you would get x times x, x squared. That means we definitely know that the first two terms of each bracket are going to be x and x. 
the question is, what are the two terms next to the two x's? So to find out those two terms, you come up here to the product, the p value, and the p value is given by the end term. Remember, it's important that you order all of this the right way so that you get all of this right. So this part is the p. So it includes, importantly, the sign before it. In this case, it's a positive positive 12. Now, bear with me. The next thing we're going to do is the S. That means the sum. It will make sense in a second. The sum, the S, is going to be the term, including the sign, before the single X, the X that has that invisible one above it, right? Not the X squared term. So, plus 7. Remember, if it was minus 7, we would include the minus. So, we have plus 7 here, okay? And then, what we do is we get these two numbers, right? And we are now ask ourselves, the first thing you want to ask yourselves is, what are, this is the first step. The first thing you want to do is you want to ask, what are two numbers that multiply? That's why it's called product. So product equals times. So what two numbers multiply or times together to give positive 12? Okay, and there's a few combinations that could work, right? So we could have, and you can write them on the side when you're just getting used to this method for the first time. So 1 and 12, 1 comma 12, 2 comma 6, 3 comma 4, right? There's also the negative variations of this. For instance, negative 1 times negative 12 equals positive 12. You'll see why I'm not going to write those down in this case, but you should be wary of that. The reason I don't worry about that in this case is because the sum has to be positive. So when the sum is positive, you don't have to worry about the negative, negative variations, okay? But we know there are three positive combinations here that could multiply to 12. What you then do is you say, which one of these combinations add to plus seven? Now, why am I saying add? Because S means sum. So Notice it's very important to do the P step first. You get your possible combinations that could work. These are the possible factors, by the way. And you were asking yourself, which of these combinations would add to plus 7? 1 plus 12 is 13. So that is clearly not the answer. So we cross that off. 2 and 6 equals 8. Not the answer. 3 and 4 equals positive 7. That's the money. Three and four is our answer. See how one of them will work out. And you put that combination here. Remember, it is important that these are positive. So I will put positives there. So you have plus three and plus four. They just simply go here. How easy is that? X plus three bracket, X plus four bracket. That is the exact same thing as this initial expression and the PSF method was the way to do it. Just keep in mind, the first thing you consider are what are the possible combinations of numbers that multiply to 12. Remember, that's given by the number at the end, the constant that doesn't have an X on it. And then once you have those possible combinations in mind or in writing when you're first getting started, you then ask which combination would add together, including minuses. So when I say add, it might end up being subtract which would add together to this number, plus seven in this case, which is the number before the X, okay? Once you figure out the two factors that satisfy both of these two conditions, they simply slot into the spaces down here in the bracket because we knew again for sure that the first things on each of those brackets was going to be X because X times X is X squared, which takes us back to the original. Okay, that's how you factorize a monic quadratic trinomial. Have a go at some other questions to get used to this method. It, it is quite easy once you've had a few attempts. And after that, we will look at non-monic quadratic trinomials in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you later.